you don't have a national ID, we'll make it a condition. You know, so there were all these things which I referred to as the unwritten rules of the game. Because if you are in a game, you must understand the rules. If you don't understand the rules and you are playing, uh, you will keep losing the game. But some of these rules are not written in our economic textbooks. They are unwritten rules, but you know that if you are an economy and you don't have a working address system, you're not going to go very far. If you cannot uniquely identify the population in your country, you're not going to go very far as an economy. You can have exchange rate stability and lower fiscal deficits and so on, but you are going to be just operating in a low level equilibrium. You will not move up to a higher level. And moving up to the higher level is what we want to do. Now, if you look at the trajectory, therefore, that we decided to take, we, the government of Nana Dudangwa Akufuado, made the strategic decision to address these chronic problems by digitizing the Ghanaian economy and government services. The overarching objective of this digital drive is to formalize the economy, increase government revenue, fight corruption, and ultimately provide public services to, to citizens more efficiently and more conveniently. Digitization essentially removes the human interface. And if you look at the problems we had, whether it's at the passport office, or the driver's license office, or the ports or the births and deaths registry uh, or the Ghana uh, uh, GRE Revenue Authority, all these interfaces, all the problems we were having in these different areas was because of the human interface. And as they say, Nipa Yebad, <laughs> the human interface, uh, you will encounter corruption immediately because the systems were very uh, bureaucratic and manual. And so we decided to digitize. And so we needed to put certain pillars in place. Issue national ID cards to all Ghanaians, implement a functional address system, provide de facto bank accounts to the bankable, uh, to the, all those people who are eligible for bank accounts, implement mobile money interoperability, digitize the provision of government services, and so on. We, I'm very happy to note that we've made tremendous progress on all these fronts. And Ghana is clearly on its way to become one of the most digitized economies in Africa within the next two years. <laughs> Specifically, we've issued the National Biometric ID Card, which no government has been able to do since independence. So far, we have 15.5 million people who have been enrolled, and we expect that this process for the above 15 years uh, democratic, demographic, the, those above 15 years of age, that process will be completed this year. Uh, we will then move into the schools and do those below 15 years. National ID system that has been implemented has provided Ghana a database that will be the anchor for all transactions in the future. We are about to move into a new economy, if you, don't, if you haven't already realized that, uh, it, because it is going to provide a unique, a single source of truth and a unique identity um, for all transactions across the spe spectrum. And so this year, what we've been doing since we came into office has been the integration of the national ID database with other databases, key databases. So we've integrated it with SNPT, we've integrated it with GRA, and with GRA, for example, up to 2016, 10 numbers in Ghana were 750,000. By just making the TIN number your national ID number, we've immediately increased it from 750,000 in 2016 to 15.5 million as at now. 
in terms of people with tax ID numbers. We have, we have, we have integrated the national ID with the NHIS, and uh, we, are, we are moving on to controlling an accountant general's department. Uh, the ghost workers will not be happy. Um, but we are doing that now. We are, we, are, we are in discussions with the banks and the Bank of Ghana. The Bank of Ghana is driving. Uh, all bank accounts uh, will be linked to a national ID number, and the process will, will, will start soon. And banks will start, once the process starts, they will start accepting and verifying the individuals using the national ID card. Um, I, I expect as the uh, Minister for Communications and Dig Digitalization uh, will soon announce which the, that we will all from maybe end of June or beginning of July this year, everybody will have to register their SIM with a national ID number. So we all have to do that, otherwise we lose that SIM. Uh, and that will really give us uh, a real um, identity for all Momo transactions, for example, and it then takes away fraud that is taking place, whether it's SIM box or through Momo and so on. We will, we will discard all of that. Um, we will also, um, we are moving, we are dis also doing the births and deaths registry. The digitization there is about 80% complete now. Uh, but what we are putting in place with the Beds and Deaths Registry is a system where we hope uh, from next year, when a child is born, right at birth, within a month, each child will be given a unique national ID number across the country. And that will help us maintain that database right from birth all the way to death. So it's um, really a, a different country that we are trying to, to move into. Uh, I know that it was a challenge. What we tried, to, what we have done in Ghana, uh, was a challenge. When we met with the NIA and the Margins Group initially, they had wanted to issue very, very delayed cards because it was. Uh, but we said that they, given the nature of our people, you should do instant issuance of these cards because a lot of the times, if people have cards, they may not return for them and we should try to do instant issuance. But they pointed us out that no country in the world had done instant issuance of national ID cards before. So we said, well, we will be the first, and we were the first. So thank you very much for, 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 for making us happen, making that happen. We've implemented a digital address system capturing every square inch of land or water in Ghana. In the process of implementing the digital address system, we have provided unique addresses for 7.5 million properties in Ghana. We have identified 7.5 million, including huts in all the villages, 7.5 million properties, and we are providing the digital addresses and street addresses to all those um, houses and properties. The Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority has provided street names and house numbers for every unnamed street, and we are affixing address plates for every property, uh, and we'll continue to do that. There are 7.5 million. The first phase will deal with 4 million properties, and the next phase will deal with 3.5 million properties. We've already begun discussions, and they are going very well with Google, and, they, and if all goes well, they will incorporate Ghana's property address system into Google Maps, and we will move from there. This is the first time since independence that Ghana will have a complete property address system. And for businesses, uh, nobody really needs to tell you the implications, the impact of having a, a, a unique property addressing system in, in the country. You just think about it, whether it's America or the UK or Germany, if today the address systems disappear, just the address systems, those economies will collapse, just like that. They cannot function without address systems. And so we are, the opportunity cost of not having a, these address systems for e-commerce and so on is just huge. Delivery of services and so on is huge. And we are really um, very, very, very um, happy that Ghana has been able to do this. 
Of course, there is the groundbreaking mobile money interoperability, which has also been implemented. Uh, the mobile money payments interoperability has made it easy for transfer of money across different telcos and between bank accounts and mobile wallets. That is the unique feature of Ghana's interoperability. You're not just going between different telcos, but between bank accounts and mobile wallets. And since you have over, you know, so much in, 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 in the system, it has solved the major problem of people having access to bank accounts because more through because of mobile money interoperability bank accounts uh, or mobile money accounts are essentially functioning like bank accounts the data shows that the Ghana currently is the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa and the total value of mobile money transactions in 2020 during this pandemic was 569 billion Ghana CDs. That's about $100 billion in 2020. <laughs>